What's going on guys? I'm the Walrus Jedi and welcome to today's video where I will be ranking all three of John Jackson Miller's Star Wars Expanded Universe or Legends novels. So if you like this kind of video then please consider liking and subscribing and hitting the notification bell for more videos on Star Wars books and just other Star Wars things in general. There will be some spoilers for these three books. Um, it's not going to be like super in depth, but there will be some spoilers, so consider that your spoiler warning if you don't want to know anything about these books. Yeah, so without further ado, let's just get right to it. So coming in at number three is Knight Errant by John Jackson Miller and published by Del Rey, January 25th, 2011. It is set 1032 BBY, or basically a thousand years before the prequel trilogy. You follow Jedi Knight Kara Holt as she is deep in the Sith Empire trying to do good. She tries to kill Lord Diamond as he is battling his brother, Lord Odeon, but decides to save innocent people from the two Sith, with the help of Jaro Rusher. Then, on a world ruled by Sith siblings, Kulian and Dromica, whom Kara overthrows just in time for Arcadia, Kalamandra, to arrive. She takes her cousins, Kulian and Dromica, Kara and Jaro, to her world. This Sith shows off her planet, which, unlike the other Sith worlds Kara has seen, is peaceful, but... Arcadia has made it so no one is special, and there is no way to rise in the ranks. There's no way to improve yourself, basically. She also asks Kara for help in killing Vilia Kalamandra, but Kara refuses to help the Sith, and she and Jaro and the others escape. This book is third on the list because the main character, Kara Holt, is not that interesting for a main character. She's actually the weakest aspect of this book. The exploring of the Sith Empire and the different Sith worlds and the different Sith Lords, that is fascinating and interesting. So if you would have paired that with a a better main character, this, this book actually probably would be in, say, like a top 10 maybe. But... Yeah, she just isn't that interesting. All right, number two. Lost Tribe of the Sith, The Collected Stories by John Jackson Miller, published by Del Rey, July 24th, 2012. These stories were originally published as ebooks for a, a few years prior to 2012. And then obviously in 2012, they published the collected stories in paperback. And it is nine stories taking place 5,000 BBY to 2,975 BBY. And in the first one, Lost Tribe of the Sith, Precipice, which is set 5,000 BBY, we follow a, a Captain Yaru Corson of the Sith transport ship Omen. He and the crew of this ship, everyone on the ship, are slaves to the Sith Lord Naga Sadao. The Omen crashes on an isolated planet, Kesh, and basically they struggle to survive and, you know, they forage and basically find scraps to try and live. And they do see a winged creature with a rider, so they know that there are people on this planet. And then the next one is... Lost Tribe of the Sith Skyborn, which is also 5,000 BBY. And in this one, we get basically the natives' perspective. So we follow Adari Val, a female Kesheri, and we learn about the Kesheri and Kesh. Yeah, so Adari is the rider on the, the creature, the flying creature, and they capture her, and they learn about each other. And... Eventually, Adari is the one that basically bridges the gap. So the Sith go to the capital city of Tav, 
of the Kesh. And basically, they claim they're basically gods, Skyborn. And they kind of kick the, the elite leaders out and basically become the leaders while they try and get their ship fixed. And Adari, who was Force-sensitive, continues to develop her powers studying under Yaru Corson. And then the third story, Lost Tribe of the Sith Paragon, takes place 4985 BBY, and we follow Sela Corson, Yaru's brother's wife, until he died and Yaru married her, unable to repair their ship due to a lack of metal and supplies and spare parts and everything. They just decide to stay and rule the Kashiri and enslave them and, you know, do the classic bad guy stuff. And tensions arise between the human Sith and the Masasi, you know, so the basically the Sith species, you know, so they're red, they're aliens. None of their kids that are being born on Kesh are surviving. And so eventually they're all wiped out, leaving an all-human Sith tribe. And this is where the Kashiri resistance uh, kind of starts to arise and they have members in like Sila's staff to kind of spy on them and even Adari and she's the founder of the resistance and she vows to end the plague. The next story, Lost Tribe of the Sith, Savior, takes place 4975 BBY. We follow three characters, Grand Lord Yaru Corson, leader of the Sith and Grand Lord is their title of the leader for the tribe. Then you have Adari Val, leader of the Kesheri Resistance, and Sila Corson, who seeks revenge on Yaru, her second husband, for killing her first husband. Yaru avoids Sila's attempts to kill him, but is killed by his stepson, Jeriad, but he is in turn killed by his sister, Nita. The Kesheri Resistance were betrayed, and Adari and others fled to avoid Sith enslavement. Nita becomes the new Grand Lord. And then next, Lost Tribe of the Sith, Purgatory, 3960 BBY. We follow Oriel Kitai, a Sith Saber, and her friend Jelf Morian, a slave who sells high-quality fertilizer to Kesheri farmers, and is also secretly a Jedi Shadow, who was stranded on Kesh. Oriel goes on the run, and Jelf helps her, she discovers his ship and decides to use it to gain her position back. Jelf goes to prevent this. And then the next story, Lost Tribe of the Sith Sentinel, takes place the same year, 3960 BBY. And Oriel and Jeff, Jelf, jeez, Ori and Jelf go back to his farm to await some Sith, but Ori was betrayed and only enemies came. They found the ship, and they unwittingly activated the anti-theft bombs, and all the Sith on the farm perished. Ori and Jelf set up a homestead after that, and started a family. Lost Tribe of the Sith Pantheon takes place 3000 BBY. We follow Varner Hiltz, an elderly Sith caretaker of the tribe's records and lore. Hiltz becomes the leader of the tribe to stop all the lesser factions from vying for power, but that is after he searches for something in the Sith Temple, which we find out in the next story, Lost Tribe of the Sith Secrets, also in 3000 BBY. Hiltz goes to the Sith Temple to learn secrets, which ends up being the location of a second landmass or continent on Kesh. And obviously the Sith are like, oh, we gotta go conquer that place, go look for resources and whatever. And then the next one, Lost Tribe of the Sith, Pandemonium, takes place 2,975 BBY, so 25 years later. We start with Alankari Keshiri Karathane, Chief Military Administrator. She sees the Sith scouting party arrive to Alankiar via airships, and the Keshiri destroy two of the three airships 
Then the final airship made it far inland, but was taken down by the Alankari Air Force. However, Adel, the leader of this Sith invasion, took Kara captive. Back in Tave, the Sith capital, the main force of 63 airships is launched, led by Corsten Bentado, and eventually Varner Hiltz, you know, the grand leader, he does come later, and basically through deception and trickery, they managed to take over Alan Kiar. And these stories were fantastic intriguing. I really enjoyed following this tribe over the centuries and, you know, seeing little different factions pop up. And it was even cool that, you know, there was a, a Jedi thrown in the mix along the way to kind of make it a little interesting. But this isn't number one as you might know what number one is if you know what uh, John Jackson Miller's Star Wars novels he wrote are, because it isn't very many. And if you know anything about this book, you'll know why it's number one. And, uh, well, it's Kenobi by John Jackson Miller, published by Del Rey, August 27th, 2003. And it takes place 19 BBY, or basically just after Revenge of the Sith. And in this story, Obi-Wan Kenobi helps Annaline Caldwell and other local farmers, you know, defend off the Tusken Raiders, led by Ayark. Kenobi also does grow close to Annaline, but it doesn't go anywhere as, you know, obviously that's not what he's supposed to be. He's not supposed to be falling in love and getting into a relationship. He's got things he's got to do. He's got to watch over Luke and he's, and he's got to do his training with Qui-Gon Jinn, but he does help these people fend off the Tusken Raiders in that. And he does help Annaline as her dream is to go to an old Iranian university and, uh, and study there. So he helps, he helps her basically get there, puts her application in and all that and arranges transport there. It's uh, it's a pretty good book. Although it is interesting that, you know, she goes to Alderaan. So you do think, oh, was she still on Alderaan when it blew up? <laughs> That's an interesting little thought. I gave this book a 10 out of 10 in my review. Link in the description. This was a fantastic read. Disney should have adapted this book for the Kenobi show because it would have made a fantastic show or movie or whatever they would have done. But no, they had to give us the garbage we got instead. Yeah, this is a must read for everybody if you haven't read it. Uh, do yourself a favor and give it a read. I think you'll really enjoy it. Well, that is the list. Let me know which of these three is your favorite or... Uh, if you want to, your ranking of these three books in the comments section down below. And you can watch my ranking of the Drew Carpetian novels or the Michael Reeves novels on the left side right now. And uh, yeah, uh, and there will be links to the reviews of the videos in. There will be links to the reviews of these books in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.